Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith. I'm a registered EEG technologist. And in today's video, we're gonna look at a woman who's in her 50s. She has a history of epilepsy, but she's currently seizure free and she's on the seizure medication gabapentin. So if we look at this record initially, we're gonna wanna count the background frequency or the posterior dominant rhythm found in the back of the head. So you're gonna wanna look at O1 for the left back of the head and O2 for the right back of the head because the even numbers are the right side and the odd numbers are the left side. So if we count how many waves per second, we can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe eleven if we're lucky, probably about ten and a half. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. So we could say they have a continuous, I guess we'll see if it's continuous as we scroll through, but symmetric so far posterior dominant rhythm, 10 and a half hertz, or 10 waves per second. Now, as we scroll through, we can see some eye blinks right here. The background seems to be continuous and symmetric, which is a good sign. As we scroll through, definitely some more eye blink artifacts there. And as we scroll through here, we can see some three hertz, so about Mm, three waves per second, frontally dominant. Let me change the sensitivity so you can see it better. So if you look here, FP2, F8, these are in the front, and this is where the main spike and slow wave activity is coming from. It's not really as prominent in the back of the head. So as you can see in all the frontal leads, it is most prominent three hertz, so three waves per second about frontally dominant spike and wave or SW discharges. Interesting. Now that makes sense since this patient has a history of epilepsy. So you would expect to see, well, I guess you can see epileptic discharges. It just depends on how well the epilepsy is controlled. Now these happen in between seizures. They're called interictal discharges. Here's another one of them. So they last about between one and two seconds and they're between probably three and four waves per second, probably about three waves per second. As we keep scrolling, see if we can find any more. So they seem to be pretty, pretty common in this patient's EEG. Now, what you would look for is to test the patient's consciousness during these discharges. You would ask them questions or give them a code word during these short bursts of spike and wave discharges. Might be a little difficult. Here's some eye blinks. Might be difficult because the they're so short. They're literally only about a second to two seconds long, but do your best try to give them some sort of code word, ask them some questions during these, especially if they keep happening. Might as well test their level of consciousness. And there's some artifact not coming from the brain. As we keep scrolling, see if these discharges had longer runs or trains and they evolved over time, they had some buildup, then you could consider it a full seizure, but they're short, they only last about a second, so they're not seizures per se, they're, they're stuff that happens in the brain between seizures. So interesting to see all these interictal discharges. Pretty cool EEG, I would say. It's not, not every day you get to see an EEG with epileptic discharges. A lot of the time, they'll just be boring. They might just have slowing. But this, we found some cool epileptic discharges. Now, the even better part is that this patient's epilepsy is actually well controlled on her gabapentin. So, no seizures, just these interictal discharges. 
Thank you guys for looking at this EEG with me. If you like the video, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more of these EEG record reviews, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube. I'll post these on LinkedIn as well. I love to connect with you guys and have a wonderful day.